Hey everyone, Mark from The Top Homeowner, and today we're going to show you how to install a new Wi-Fi based light switch. Uh, this is a light switch actually from a company called TP-Link, and uh, TP-Link makes a line of smart home products called the Casa line, so Casa Smart. This is actually a dimmable uh, Wi-Fi based light switch. So uh, I'm gonna go through the process and show you how to install this in your house, but first I'm gonna tell you about some of the benefits and why we chose this specific model. One thing is this does not require a hub. So unlike some other smart switches that use different protocols like Z-Wave or Zigbee, they require a hub in order to operate in your house. Since this works just on your Wi-Fi network, this is the most affordable option. And actually, this Wi-Fi light switch uh, found at the time of purchase was around 20 bucks so it's really really affordable and it works really well the casa smart home devices actually include an app that you can download to either a google android device or an ios device from apple in both cases those programs will let you control this remotely from anywhere in the world so you can see if the light's on you can turn it off you can even set schedules and you can select how bright or how dim you want the light to be if you have a dimmable switch the Casa app also includes some setup instructions for whatever specific device you're installing. So if you need some additional help, know that you have that available in the app. Now, of course, you don't have to have the app in order to control this. You can turn the lights on and off from the switch and you can also control the brightness uh, directly from the wall. The app is just there in case you want to actually make it a smart device so you can control it from anywhere. It's also compatible with Alexa and Google Home so you can integrate this into any of your smart home setups. So one specific thing to know is this model is not gonna work for three-way switches. Uh, three-way switch is basically when you have a light or a set of lights that you can turn on from more than one light switch. So if you need that feature, I'll leave a link in the description below uh, that will take you to the version that can actually control those lights. The other thing to know is this requires a neutral wire in the outlet box where your light switches are. If your house is 10 years old or newer, that shouldn't be a problem, but if it's older than 10 years, uh, you might wanna double check and make sure you have a neutral wire in the outlet box before you purchase this. If you don't have a neutral wire, I'll also leave an option in the description below that can work for your situation. Now, before you get started, it's always important to make sure the power is shut off to the location that you're working at. So make sure you go to the breaker and shut off the correct breaker before you get started. Once you do that, we can jump into the installation. Now that we've got the power off, we can go ahead and remove this cover. Now we're also going to test this with a voltage detector first to make sure the power is actually off, which it is. All right. Now you can see here they installed this switch with this backstab wiring method. Um, what we're going to do to make this easy uh, to uninstall this is you can either push in a flat blade screwdriver here to release these wires. In our case, what we're going to do to make it quick is we're just going to cut this off. And then we'll end up restripping this wire uh, when we install the new one. All right, so as you can see, we have these black wires, um, which are the wires that go to the switch. And then on the inside, we have another set of wires. And here's our neutral wires. So now that we have these wires out of this box here, let's go ahead and open up our new switch and include some wire nuts some screws to mount it. And the other nice thing about this specifically, it even comes with a faceplate, so you don't have to buy that separately. One other thing about this switch is you have to understand what the line and what the load is. So the load is actually the black wire that's going to the light, and the line is the wire that's coming from your electrical panel. With this box, we have this pigtail connection, so this should be the location where the power is coming in because it's gonna be branching off from this location to go to other areas. And then with this wire, since there's only a single wire here, this should be the one that's going up to the light switch that controls it. So I'm fairly confident that this is the line and that this is the load. In order to confirm that, what I have to do is we would have to put wire nuts on the end of these uh, wires here to make it safe. And we'd have to go back to the electrical panel and turn the power on and use our voltage detector to determine which one of these has power coming to it so we can mark it. So if you don't feel comfortable about this step, I totally understand what you would do is you would hook it up your best guess initially and then you would put everything back, have it installed and then you would test it. If it didn't work properly, then what you would do is you would do the whole process over again, shut off the power at the breaker, uninstall this and then swap these two wires and everything should be fine. Also, if you're not comfortable with working with electricity, I always highly recommend hiring a professional electrician uh, that can take care of this for you. All right, to demonstrate what this looks like, I've already turned the power back on and this is the one that I assume doesn't have any power coming to it, which is true. 
and then this is the one that has the power. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the power back off with the breaker and uh, come back. All right, now that the power is off again, I'm gonna go ahead and take these wire nuts off. To get this face plate off, it looks like we have to pry up from the bottom because we've got this little cutout here. All right, so in the back here, you've got two wires. The white goes to our neutral, green goes to ground, and then at the bottom here, this is where we put our line, and the top is where we put the load or where the light itself is being powered from. First, let's go ahead and make the ground connection. All we have to do is put these two wires together. So this is a green wire on this light switch, but in the box, it's typically just a bare wire, which is your ground. So we'll just put these two wires together here as close as we can, and then we'll put this wire nut on and we'll twist it and that will make this connection. I always like to pull on the nut just to make sure it's tight. Now with this one, since there's a lot of wires coming into this wire nut, I'm gonna go ahead and reuse the same wire nut that was included with the house versus the one that they included here with the light switch because it's a little bit bigger. Um, if this wasn't big enough to handle all the wires, they do make larger wire nuts that you can purchase and use. Um, you don't always see this many wires uh, in one of these boxes, so you might not have this issue. Same thing, just put the wires together and then put it in the nut and tighten it down. Okay. Now we're gonna strip off the wire that we need for both the line and the load terminals. And then I'm just gonna form a nice little J hook with my pliers. Same with this one. We'll need to loosen up these side terminals here so we can hook this behind. And we can either install it this way, we can side wire it with this, uh, these terminals here, um, or it also includes a back wire method. Unlike the light switch we pulled out, it's not the stab-in type, it's actually the kind that you can put behind a clamp, which works really well. In our case, since I've already made these hooks, I'm gonna install it the side wiring way, but if you don't wanna do this process and you just wanna have straight wire, you can feed it in the back here uh, behind this clamp and tighten it down, it should be fine. And now the light itself. All right, so all these connections are made. Now we just need to get these wires back in the box. Um, this could be a little bit tricky depending on how many wires you actually have to feed back in here. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna bend these and uh, get these out of the way as much as we can. Basically we want them to be able to collapse as we're putting this switch back in the box. Also, it's important to make sure that the switch is right side up before you get too far along because if it's upside down, it will make things uh, just a little bit more fun. It's also why you want to make sure this these all have tight connections on the wire nuts because you don't want this to loosen up when you're putting these back in. All right, now that we've got power back on the breaker, uh, I've gone ahead and gone in the Casa app and we're gonna add this to our app, add a device and we're gonna do a smart switch. And it says, have you already wired it? Yes, we have. Check the Wi-Fi light. Is it blinking orange and green? And actually it is blinking orange and green. The green's just really hard to see. All right, so go to your phone settings and join your smart dimmers Wi-Fi network. All right, so we need to go to settings, TP link, and it'll start adding this to our network. Oh, and we need to update the firmware on it, of course. So we'll let this go for a couple seconds and then we'll try it out. All right, so now this is fully set up and fully installed. You can see here on this app, uh, we can turn it on and off by just simply using that. We've got some other lights on in here. You can turn it back on, and then you can also adjust the brightness level from your app. Uh, let's go down to 25%. You can do 75, and then actually, you can do 75, and then you can actually just kind of use this as a control wheel to change the brightness as well. You can also set up a schedule if you want the light to come on or off at certain uh, days of the week, certain times of the day. You can set it up to be on a timer, so you can have it, once it's on, uh, you can have it turn off after a certain amount of time. And you can even have it set up for away mode, which will actually have it turn on and off on a schedule, whatever schedule that you set. So uh, a lot of nice features here. This is gonna be great. This is actually in our office area and I do a lot of filming in this area. So uh, having this adjustability for these really bright lights that we've installed is gonna be really nice and we can not have it blaring all the time. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate you subscribing to the Top Homeowner channel. Our goal is to help you become the very best homeowner that you can possibly be. We cover all kinds of different topics, everything from home maintenance and repair items to product reviews and even things such as this. So thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.